Hi, this is Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. A less obvious benefit for me in creating these video tutorials is that I get more haircuts. As a developer advocate, I love communicating new frameworks and platforms to developers so that they can go off to create incredible products and projects. In this video, I'm going to give you five things that you should check for before you build your first demo app. Now, if you're looking for ideas and inspirations, I'm going to give you five applications across different industries that you can consider just to get those creative juices pumping. Stay tuned. As a developer advocate, I love communicating new frameworks and platforms to developers so that they can go off to create incredible products and projects. In this video, I'm going to give you five things that you should check for before you build your first demo app. Numero uno, there's always something valuable that needs to be tracked or recorded or logged. Now, because of cryptocurrency, we are used to thinking of the data in the blockchain as the quantity of Bitcoin that's moving from party A to party B. But this doesn't have to be monetary in nature. In smart contracts, your data could be numerical or non-numerical. It could be a list of names of people who have custody of a particular grand piano. It could be some kind of an index from a measure that you are taking from the atmosphere. It could be anything really depending on your scenario. Number two, your smart contract will likely have two types of data. There's data that will never change and there's data that will change. For example, if you are dealing with the sale of a vehicle, the make and model and year of the car should never change throughout the lifetime of the contract. Now, data that would have to change would be things like the mileage of the car. In fact, it is the change of this data that creates the blockchain. So think about what is that data that will have to change over time in your scenario. Disan, historical transactions are important. We are used to dealing with data that's the most current. In a smart contract scenario, it's equally interesting to look at the historical transactions of data change that led up to the current value. Maybe it's for audit trail, maybe it's to make a decision, but in your scenario, there will always be a reason why you need to preserve and look at the historical transactions. Number Ampat, this is the golden rule of blockchain that recorded data cannot be changed or removed. If there is a change in data, we add to the chain. We do not go back and change an old value, nor do we delete it from the chain. The chain keeps growing. Numero cinque. Finally, there's always actions that are automated based on the change in data. That's what makes smart contracts uh, smart. So you will have particular actions that you can take in your scenario that is triggered or invoked based on some data change. Now think about the scenario of e-commerce. If you have X amount of um, inventory, your smart contract can be built in such a way to trigger a sold out notification upon a certain number of inventory left. So that is an example of an action that's automated based in a change in data. Now, if you're looking for ideas and inspirations, I'm going to give you five applications across different industries that you can consider just to get those creative juices pumping. Education. So we could create a smart contract app that is taking in all the grades of the students over the course of the year. Uh, so when they finish an assignment or a, a test, these information are being entered into the blockchain and we could wire up the smart contract to determine the grade at the end of the school year. Let's run the scenario through our checklist. Are we tracking something of value? 100% ask the kids, they want good grades, right? Is that data that change over time? Yes, throughout the school year 
as they finish different assignments, as they complete different tests, scores will be added. Is looking at the history of their grades important? Yes, if the parents or the teacher wants to track improvement, if the parents want to look at it uh, for whatever purposes, yes, looking at the history of the data change is important. And can we say that we should never change the data that has been recorded? 100% unless you are looking to um, hack into the system and change your grades. And what kind of actions can a smart contract take at the end of uh, the school year or based on certain grade changes? Well, we could do a lot. For example, the end of the year, an action may be to close out the grade card and email the final GPA or the grades uh, to the parents. Let's take a look at the retail industry. Maybe we can create a rewards tracking platform where we can track the consumer's uh, reward points. Every time they buy something that earns them points, we, we log it. Every time they cash it out and spend it, we, we log it as well. To make things interesting, we can definitely build in things like expiration where certain points awarded, say, a year ago would expire. Now let's run this uh, hypothetical app through our checklist. Are we measuring something that is valuable? Absolutely, the points. Uh, we are measuring that and tracking that. Is there a pattern where data keeps changing? Yes, every time the consumer earn points or cashes them up to use it, that is the data change that we're looking for. Is it interesting to look at the history? Absolutely. When there is a dispute, if, if there is a, uh, a reason to do analytics, the history becomes very important. Is it immutable? Is the data immutable? Yes, we want to keep it immutable because we do not want anybody to have the authority to go back in history and change uh, the point on by, by reducing it or artificially increasing it. And actions, are there actions that can be taken automatically upon certain triggers? Yes, we can. We can have instances where uh, the points expire. So a certain action can be taken upon certain rules. This is fun. Okay, I love animals, so let's do something with the uh, veterinary uh, space. So we can create something similar that is being used in the, uh, in the healthcare space. We can track immunization records for um, our animals when you bring them in. So this will be uh, an instance where we have a record of all of the shots and uh, treatment that a particular pet has uh, undergone. So let's put our hypothetical app through our checklist. Are we tracking something valuable here? Yes, we are. We are tracking the, the immunization records and other treatment and surgery for the pet. Is there a pattern of data change? Yes, there is because these immunization records do expire and you need to get your shots uh, every year or whatever the time span is. Is it interesting to look at the history? Absolutely, the vet will probably want to retrieve a history of, um, of the, the, the animal's um, uh, medical history. Is the data recorded intended to be immutable? Yes, uh, it's not safe for a um, animal to not be updated on a rabies shot and be exposing itself to other animals uh, in, in the hospital, for example. And other actions that can be taken upon certain uh, data change or da data patterns, yes, we can always send reminders to the uh, pet owners that the uh, rabies uh, immunization is uh, overdue or something like that. So absolutely. This next category is one of my favorites, entertainment. Um, it's very common for what they call baby bands to perform at, at venues like bars or sometimes restaurants, but there are venues that would uh, house up to an audience of like 250 or maybe even 300. And typically, the venue owner and the musicians will have some kind of agreement in place. Uh, and if everybody fulfills their duty, everybody gets paid and revenue is shared. However, there are times where there are misunderstandings, so a smart contract in place will guarantee that the, the payouts are, are divvied up properly as agreed. So let's run this entertainment 
smart contract app through our checklist. Are we tracking something valuable? Yes, we're tracking money. We're tracking revenue that's made from the ticket sales. Are we looking at a pattern where there's data change? Yes. Uh, we may be tracking things like what time the um, musician shows up, how many sets that they are playing. Have they played the first song, the second song? Have they played the last song? So there'll be data that's constantly changing. Are we interested in the history? Yes, we are in the sense of checking the milestones to make sure that every single milestone is reached and fulfilled. Do we want to make sure that the data is immutable? Yes, we do not want to go back and fudge the data to say that, well, you didn't show up on time, or well, we agreed to 40% when it's really 35%. So things should be immutable. Are there actions that can be taken in this particular scenario? Yes, at the end of a performance, at the end of an engagement, if all things are fulfilled, the smart contract can automatically trigger the payout. All right, one last one. How about games? Uh, we can totally build a smart contract driven universal game wins tracker. So between uh, two parties, let's say you and me, we play uh, a variety of games and we want to keep track of who won and who, who lost uh, over time. So this will be an interesting uh, smart contract app because then there's no argument uh, who won that poker game last week or maybe two years ago. All right, let's put the Universal Game Wins Tracker smart contract app through our checklist. Is it measuring something of value? Well, it'll be as valuable and as important as you and I think it is to keep wins between the two of us. So let's say it's a yes. Uh, is there a pattern of data change? Yes, we'll keep playing games, uh, assuming that we stay as friends. Uh, we'll keep playing new games and new data would have to be entered. Is it interesting to uh, take a look at the history? Yeah, particularly when, um, when there's a dispute on who won that particular game last summer. Should the data be immutable? Uh, you bet it should be. So no one can go back and change the, uh, the wins or the losses. Are there actions that we can wire into this hypothetical app? We sure can. For example, we can have the smart contract be set up such that at the end of the year, the app will tally up the wins and losses and automatically trigger some reward to the winner. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's beer, maybe it's $100, maybe the winner gets to punch the loser. Um, whatever it may be, it'll be fun. Hmm, I think I'm gonna build this app. That's it. Five things that you should think about and five ideas to get your creative juices pumping. I'd love to hear from you. Comment below. Let me know what you're going to build. Let's move on to the next episode.